I feel like in recent years, it's become easier to make regrettable video game purchases just because I don't want to miss the wave. You know, a game is very talked about, has a lot of media presence, looks like it must be fun because of how many other people seem to enjoy it, and then turns out to be a flash in the pan or just plain bad. Other folks, Rel here. In the background, you'll see some gameplay from a few titles as we share some thoughts on better gaming. If you take some time to browse Steam, you'll see loads of games with an absurd amount of positive reviews, which include games that have cultivated communities over long periods of time, and then other games that are absolute trash piles, incredibly popular trash piles, which makes me question the value of reviews in this day and age and how we measure quality. Quality is incredibly subjective, so take everything I say here about individual games with a grain of salt and just try to internalize the general message. As of recording this, I've spent more than 300 hours with Baldur's Gate 3, and around 100 of those hours were back in beta, when Act 1 was the only thing that you had access to. You could tell even way back then that the game was something special. Valheim, very similar example. I have more than 500 hours in this game now because it's incredibly smart. Pacing is really good, and you can make the game your own. At the same time, I only have around 60 hours in Deep Rock Galactic, despite also feeling like it is a phenomenal game that I've been playing off and on for years now. It's just that I can only play a few runs at a time before needing to take a break from the core loop. So how do we measure what a good game actually is? Is it the time we've spent playing? Probably not, because games are built for different purposes. Some of them are good because of their moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, some games are good because of their story, and then some games are good because they're fun to play with friends. It's unfortunate that we're in an age where trend chasing is the norm. A popular variety streamer picks up the game, and then their community starts talking about it, and then other streamers are quick to jump on that bandwagon because they don't want to miss out on views. Then their communities buy the game because so many people are playing it now that there's a fear of missing out. And if a lot of people are playing the game, then the game must be good, right? Obviously not. The cycle of popularity begetting popularity is detrimental, and a lot of us fall victim to it out of impulse, instead of making an informed decision. So why does this matter at all? People are ultimately going to buy what they're going to buy, and whether you feel good, bad, or somewhere in between, it kind of is what it is. My argument is this. Every time you're purchasing a product, you're rewarding the behaviors that you want to see more of. I know it might not feel like you have an impact, but you do. We all do. Whether it's clicking on that obviously clickbait video, or buying that game that looks bad, but a lot of people are playing it for some reason, or paying into a microtransaction that you very much do not need. It all matters in small, subtle, and important ways. If you'd like to know how I try to, evaluate whether or not a game is worth my time and is something that I would like to support, it's as follows. I ask, are the developers worth supporting? Does the game excite me? And am I sure that that excitement isn't just novelty? This criteria functions as helpful guidelines for me, but it may not make sense for you. The importance of having a criteria at all, however, is to slow us down. It's to make us think instead of purchasing on instinct. Remember, our goal should be to reward behaviors that we want to see more of. Do that, and eventually, hopefully, the industry as a whole will be better for it. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. And speaking of behaviors that you'd like to see more of, generous members of Patreon help support the creation of videos like this, while letting me continue building my passion projects like the new TTRPG I've been developing. If you'd like to support these endeavors, consider becoming a patron. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.